Today, we're gonna cover painful mistakes tons of beginners are making when using Premiere Pro. If you adopt just two out of these seven mistakes that we cover today, I promise you'll start editing much faster, your videos will look much better, and best of all, your viewers will start to get addicted to your content. Let's dive in. Mistake number one is not using the stacked or pancake timeline approach. In Premiere Pro, we obviously have a really customizable layout of windows, which is great, but a lot of people don't know that you can actually open up multiple timelines and stack them on top of each other. This is helpful in so many different ways. If you're just starting an edit and you have tons of B-roll, without a doubt you need to throw all of it on the bottom timeline and scrub through each clip to determine only the best segments of each clip. Whenever you find a banger, cut that section out and upgrade it to the top timeline of just selects. This process takes time, but it's the editors who familiarize themselves with all their footage and dedicate themselves to finding only the best clips that will produce the highest quality edits. The stack timeline is also great for organizing different buckets of footage while editing. Imagine this, you're editing a YouTube video. The bottom timeline is where you are assembling the finished product, but you have three different shoot days worth of B-roll to choose from. You could have three tabs of different timelines on the top timeline, each for a different day of shooting. This can help you stay organized and will allow you to quickly find and pull the proper B-roll selects from each individual timeline. We're not done here though. The stack timeline is also great for people working on a series of videos. I've created a ton of online course content. Many of these videos reuse certain graphics that I spent a ton of time creating. Rather than create a new project for each new video, I organize all of the videos within one master project file, then each finished video has its own timeline. Whenever I'm working on a new video and I know I need to reuse a complex graphic or sequence from a past edit, with all the past edits organized as tabs on the top timeline, it makes it super easy to reference past edits and reuse assets without having to recreate them from scratch or rip them from already exported videos. Mistake number two is not reframing clips to enhance the composition. When it comes to measuring the cinematic quality of a shot, it really comes down to three things. Lighting, color, and composition. Most beginners hyper-focus on color grading when they start, and that's fine because it's a powerful skill to develop, but something almost everyone overlooks at the start of their career is how much you can improve a clip with a slight adjustment of the scale, position, and rotation. Transforming this to this is nothing more than a simple process of reframing. And by the end of the video, you'll know exactly how to get that effect. And that was shot on an iPhone, by the way. But let's dial it back a little. Right off the bat, we have horizon lines and vertical lines. When these are off, you look like an amateur nine times out of 10. You can very easily fix this with a little reframing. Another mistake people make with composition is not filling the frame with their subject, leaving a ton of empty space that serves little to no purpose in the overall composition. You can zoom in and reframe so the composition makes more sense. This one might seem small, and not all that revolutionary, but think of it like this. It's a little presumptuous to assume you perfectly nailed the composition of your shot in camera with every scene you film. You can almost always improve a clip by at least two to 5% with some very quick and easy reframing. Mistake number three is something that if I had learned earlier, well, I know for a fact that I'd have less gray hair. Not using the transform effect. If you've ever watched one of my videos, it's pretty easy to tell that I really love animated graphics, text, and so on. Back in the day, I would do all of this using After Effects. I would either export a small section of my video or use Dynamic Link. I would import it to After Effects, do a complex little graphic thing. I would export it from After Effects and then re-import it back to Premiere Pro. This is where the gray hair comes from. It was exhausting, but at the time, I thought it was the only way to access two things that in my eyes are absolutely essential if you want your edits to look pro. Easy ease and motion blur. Now, if you're just getting into editing, you might laugh after seeing these, but ask anyone who's been doing this for years and they'll agree with me that these two effects are essential. This is what most basic animations look like. Now this is that same animation, but with easy ease applied. And then finally here, we've also added motion blur. Most people like myself for years thought that the only way to get this effect was to use After Effects, but the transform effect can easily replicate things all inside of Premiere Pro. You just create a keyframe at the start and then a keyframe with a new position at the end of the clip. Now we've got our movement, but it kind of looks like it's from the 1980s. Twiddle down these little arrows and now you can easily select the keyframes and drag these bars to get the easy ease effect. 
you're essentially ramping the speed to start extra fast and then more smoothly come to the final end position. But we're not done here. Head down within the transform tab and you'll see the shutter angle control. Increase this to 180 and voila, you have the perfect amount of motion blur. Watch any of your favorite YouTubers or content creators and you'll start to see the highest level of production and editing is almost always accompanied by smooth, motion blurred zooms and movements that add energy and improve the watchability of the edit. Believe it or not, this is also exactly how I reframed and improved the composition on this clip earlier. I used the rulers to set a mark on the screen where I knew I wanted the hand to stay and then I just keyframed the position, scale, and rotation to keep the framing perfect. Then we added the motion blur to sell it even more. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Holy crap, Anthony, I thought you said you were going to help me edit faster in this video. That looks like it's gonna take me forever. This is where beginner mistake number four comes into play. not creating effect presets to streamline your editing workflow. Remember that smooth zoom from earlier? Well, rather than drag and drop transform, do the keyframes, easy ease, and add motion blur every single time, just do it once, right click on the transform effect, and save it as a preset. Now you can literally find that preset and drop it over and over and over as many times as you like all across your timeline. This has so many applications throughout my editing workflow. After I dialed in my audio editing effects perfectly for my microphone, I saved them all as presets. Now I can just drag and drop those every single time I start a new video. If I want a graphic to slide onto the screen from the left, I can just grab my swipe from left preset and drop it on the text. It's just a simple transform keyframe preset that I can use over and over again. Okay, mistake number five is one that will really sneak up and bite you if you're not careful. Not treating your body properly when you edit. Bear with me here. Over the years, I've had a ton of different editing setups, from my childhood bedroom to my college dorm, my college apartment, back home after graduating, my first apartment as a big boy living on my own, then my home office at my house, and then finally we are here in my own content studio. I always just used the cheapest desk and chair that I could find, until unfortunately one day, while trying to do a backflip off a tree, I fractured one of the vertebrae in my spine. It's dumb, I know, but this is back when parkour was kind of cool. <laughs> Parkour! Ever since then, I've had to take things much more seriously and my editing setup is no exception. I've tried easily 15 different editing chairs and I can tell you without a doubt the FlexiSpot C7 is the best there is. Not only does it look great, but the lumbar support is second to none. I can honestly edit for hours without stopping where in the past I couldn't sit for more than 30 to 40 minutes without having to stand. And speaking of standing, I also use the FlexiSpot sit and stand desk. So whenever I do hit the inevitable wall of back pain, I can briefly raise the desk and decompress for 10 to 20 minutes while standing. FlexiSpot is actually the sponsor of today's video and they're having an anniversary sale up to 60% off and you now also have the chance to win free orders as well. I'll have a code in the description of this video that will save you money on both the chair and the desk and I promise you will not regret it. Okay, moving on though. Mistake number six is cutting too slow. There's actually a big debate about this concept in the YouTube community right now. A lot of people are advocating for slowing down our edits and having more real and authentic conversations with their audience, to which point I 100% agree, it's a great idea. But outside of talking head videos on YouTube, when it comes to piecing together cinematic sequences where the goal is to have the most watchable and engaging sequence of clips, I would say eight times out of 10, you will improve the quality of your content by cutting at a faster pace to keep the audience on their toes. Check out these two sequences here.
Without really introducing a ton of new footage in the second sequence, I find it to be significantly more engaging to watch primarily because the pacing changes drastically. We have these moments where we're almost struggling to catch our breath as the viewer and then finally we get a minute to pause and breathe. It's that up and down energy that really holds a viewer's attention compared to most beginner videos that find a pace and stick with it slowly throughout the entire edit. That repetition causes people to leave. Then finally, we have mistake number seven, which is not using keyboard shortcuts. This one is pretty straightforward, so I won't linger on it. In fact, I'll just give you my keyboard shortcuts that you can install with the click of a button. Stick around and I'll tell you how to get those. My goal with shortcuts has always been to match every quick action to a keystroke on the left-hand side of my keyboard so that I never need to take my hand off the mouse. I have cut left and cut right, retime, rewind, fast forward, ripple delete, regular delete, adjust audio, undo, cut, and add cut point all super easily accessible. Not to mention that we have a ton more keyboard shortcuts that you can get to by just adding modifiers like command, shift, and option to those same keystrokes. I'll have my list linked in the description below with a video showing how to use them. Now, the absolute last thing in this video, I have a bonus mistake for you. Number eight, which is forgetting to enroll in 14 Day Filmmaker. All jokes aside, the course is lifetime access for just $48, but with it, you get access to over 150 streamlined tutorials covering everything there is to know about shooting and editing videos. We start from the ground up and we cover it all. From the right gear to buy, all of the proper camera settings, how to light scenes like a pro, record and edit high quality audio, capture smooth and professional movements, how to tell powerful stories, the secrets to going viral and building a brand, and tons of training on how to edit like a top 1% ninja. And we cover all of the most popular editing programs, not just Premiere Pro. You also get tons of editing templates and sound effects, cheat sheet guides, discounts on pro software like the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, and I even host a weekly live Q&A call in our students community where you can hop on and get answers to your questions in real time. Not to mention anyone who enrolls using the link in the description will get the pro camera version of the course, the smartphone specific version, and the directing crash course. If you're interested, I've got a link for the course in the description below. Other than that, hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one.